All right, now what we look at here, when we go to the home page, this is not that great. We don't want the images to all be different sizes. That doesn't actually look that great. And also the layout of it is just, it just, it's kind of messy, right? Because we got all this white space here that just doesn't make any sense. So what we're going to do now is actually change that and update it, make sure it looks good. And then we're also going to change our search results. So those also look good as well using a very similar method, but it's not going to be exactly the same because we'll just change our search results a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and open up home.html because that's what this page is on. And in here, we're item.featured, so the actual image, we're going to create a new div. So we're just going to make an empty div here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a style. I'll do width equals to 150 pixels, height equals to actually 160 pixels. So I want 160 on each one. Um, and then I'll do a background color of red, just so we can see what's going on here. So if I refresh, I now see, okay, cool. So I have these three new divs and they're in the middle. So let's actually fix that. Um, or sorry, they're aligned left. So let's actually fix that with a margin. So I'll do margin I'll do auto for top, or excuse me, zero for top and bottom, and then auto for left and right. All right, so if I refresh, there we go. So now it's right in the middle. So if I want to change the size of it, it's no big deal. So I can do 200 and 200, and that will change the size of that actual layout, right? So that's cool. So I'll leave it at 200 for now. And what we want to do is replace this red color with an image, right? We want to change the background color to a background image. So I'm actually gonna comment this out with command slash. Oh, doesn't work on CSS like that. So I'll just do slash star and then star slash. That will comment that out. So if I refresh, it goes away. However, the area that's there is still there, right? So it pushed everything down still. Okay, so now what we need to do is add a background image. So that's pretty easy. We just do background image and we'll take URL, single quotes and end it. And then we can just copy this other line here. So the media URL and image dot, or item dot image, uh, the template tags. So if I refresh, now I see that I have images coming through. So what we've noticed is, hey, look, it's repeating a lot, right? So the, we don't want it to repeat. So let's actually right away get rid of that. And I'll just press background, repeat, no repeat. All right, so I refresh, now it doesn't repeat, but this one looks way too big, right? So like we see this little line here and we see it here. So this is like the wrong size. This image isn't even showing up. And that's probably because this image is just giant, right? Uh, so what we wanna do then is we're gonna change the size of the background. And we'll do background size, and I'm gonna use cover. So cover is actually gonna cover the whole element. As we notice it, changes it correctly in proportion to the image uh, with the, I mean, the resolution might not be great, but it does change it proportionally. So all we need to do now is position it. So we do background position and we do center and then that puts it right in the center. All right. So this, this is actually pretty good. So it does cut off the image a little bit. Uh, so it's not going to be perfect, but it will be even better if our image itself is around 200, right? So this, all I'm doing here is making sure that if the image isn't 200 or whatever I set here, then it will turn it to be so, right? So even if I, if I wanted the width to be a little higher, like 250, like it's gonna change the scale of it accordingly, right? So same with uh, if I wanted the height to be a little bit different, it's gonna change that as well. Um, and it does work out pretty nicely. It's not perfect, but it, it, it will at least show us the image and it's not going to be all distorted we can see that by commenting out image class by command slash so that comments it out do a refresh and now look at it, it's nice and clean all the way down and across now again the images that you're actually choosing here should be nice and they should fit in here but if you wanted the image to be full to this whole thing we'll actually have to come back to that uh, but this actually works all right so now what we need to do is make sure our search works and it's not gonna be a whole lot different. What all we're gonna do is in our results, instead of results.html, of course, is where the search is coming through. Now, if we looked at our product views, we see search 
and then we either it's either going to go to home so if there's no search or it's going to show us the results in this case it is showing us results.html so now all we have to do is create a new table so i'll do table class equals to table so the table class of table is coming from bootstrap of course so this is all bootstrap and i'll do t head so table header th and then i'm going to put the image here but I'll leave it empty and then th and I'll put product. So then in underneath t head, I'll do t body and then table row and then close off table row, td, close off td, open another td, close that off. All right, so this is going to be where the image is. Not in table row, but image and then product. Okay, so if we refresh in here, we need now see that there's, hey, there's this. This is starting to look good. Um, okay, cool. So let's actually change what's actually coming through here by looping through the query set of products. We know it's a query set by looking in the view. Either way, if it says filter on there, that means it's a query set. That means there's going to be returning multiple. Even if it only turns one in the query set, it still returns it as a list. So that means we can loop through it. So in our results, we can go above the table row and do for product in products. And this will loop through each product. So in for. And what I'll do here is I'll just do product so we can see the result for that. If I refresh, I now see products. It says three products are returned, and then we got three products here. Perfect. All right, so, and then um, I can do the URL, so let's actually link it. I'll do ahref equals to product.get absolute URL. Now, of course, get absolute URL is assuming that we have absolute URL look, uh, set up, so let's make sure that we do. In our models for product, we do have get absolutely URL. Perfect, that's what we want. All right, so now that we have that, we can refresh in here and I can actually click on the products themselves. So this would allow me to actually jump into that product, right? So now we see it, uh, depending on what product we go to, we do see it, which is great. Okay, so now we wanna actually add an image in here. So we could do it exactly like we did it with home or the results page or the home page right here. But um, I, I, I do want to do it very similar, just not exactly the same because it is still in a table. Um, it's not actually in the home page and the thumbnail and stuff like that. So what we'll do it with the TD is I'm going to add a style and I'm going to equal it to, so width equals to, I'm going to do 160 pixels and height equals to 160 pixels as well. Okay, so if I refresh, there it does change everything which is good so it actually changes the whole setup of everything and the image itself will constantly be around that size which is good and I'm just going to copy uh, the image URL of one of these so I'm going to inspect just so I can just use something as a placeholder for now I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing right here and in here I'll just do background image URL single quote inside of there and parentheses there we go all right so now let's go back into our search and do product search all right doesn't look like our image is actually coming through so let's see why background image so we don't actually have it showing up so this might have to do this definitely has to do with um having the way the background image property actually works. It's not gonna necessarily work on every uh, element, right? So if I put a div in here, div style equals to width of 100% and height of 100%. And then background image, I'm gonna cut this out and actually put this into the div. Close off the div and then go in here and refresh. Uh, we see that the, the div is actually there, it's ready, but it looks like the link itself is not actually working. Uh, and that's because of how we have it closed off. So I need double quotes. 
on the inside. So whatever's on the outside, you have to use the opposite on the inside. So let's try that one more time. And still not showing up. Still not showing up, and this has to do with the background cover again. So background size, that is. Background size to cover. Refresh, and now it's showing those images uh, just like as if we wanted them to. And it's fitting in there nice and, and uh, neat, or nice and perfect. So if I refresh, now I have these images showing up. So it's coming together. And again, what we'll have to do is actually loop through the images themselves, just like what we did here in home.html. So uh, what I'll do now is inside of this div tag, I'll do if product dot, uh, it's going to be product image set dot all. So if there's anything in the product image set, then we'll do something else. We will use that default div or default image there. And we did use a different image before. So let's actually look at that different image that we used before by scrolling down here. And this is it right here. So we actually just use that one inside of results. And so this goes right inside of this URL here. And again, it's the quotes, the double quotes. This should work fine because it's inside of the uh, curly or the uh, curly bracket and percent. So. Uh, but notice we're using static here, so I actually have to load it in. So load static static files. All right, so if I refresh, uh, now it's showing in the one product that doesn't actually have the image, it's showing that. And then also I want to add the background. Uh, I want repeat being no repeat, as well as background position being center. All right, so there it is in the center. And what you notice, we're actually repeating ourselves a lot, so we'll actually have to come back to this to fix that repeating. All right, so now if we have this product image set, I'm gonna go back into home.html, and I'm gonna copy these two and paste them in here. So the point of allowing myself to, to copy or be repetitive, uh, when it comes to testing, I do, I am repetitive sometimes where then I go back and refactor the code once I get it working the way I want it to. Um, so at the end of the day, I, do, I don't want to copy myself over and over again, uh, but I do want to make sure that I'm, I'm at least um, showing the right stuff and it's actually working as suggested instead of spending a ton of time making sure that I'm not copying myself. Okay, so all I did here was I'm getting that, that featured image just like what we saw before. So just like this, so I can actually just copy this background image here because uh, that's the one we'll actually use. But I also have to copy this div and change this background image in for the one that's in there. And I'm going to change these two double quotes because of how I started the style on this in this case. And make sure there's not the trailing double quotes. OK, so grab this. I can even press enter there and paste that new one in. All right, so that's what it should look like. We save it, we do a refresh in here. Cool, so now we actually have our products and our images showing up and they look nice and clean, no matter what size the actual image is. So if I do T-shirt, it'll search and it'll fit right into that box. Again, it might cut, off, cut things off and all that, but if you were using a square image in this case, right, it would it would not cut off, it would actually fit in very nicely. It would. It would cover it so it, it, and it would make it bigger or smaller. It would scale it based on uh, whatever the size of the image is. In this case, it is scaling it, but uh, in some cases, it might actually cut off certain parts of it like what we saw with this one. It's actually cutting off part of the image. So if you look at the image here, it's actually cutting it off, but it's turning it into a square, and it's nice and in the background, right? It's not something they can just grab. They can't just select it and accidentally pull it off. Uh, which is and it's also a little bit harder to just copy that image too. So if you just wanted to make it a little bit harder for for the less tech savvy user, they couldn't just copy this image. It's just they could take a screenshot and stuff, but they couldn't just copy the direct image uh, that you have. All right, so we've got that. 
Now we just want to do a little bit of refactoring to make sure our code is not actually duplicated over and over like this. Um, so there's only going to be a few things that we duplicate. I'm going to comment them out because you guys would still maybe want to check this out in general. Uh, you might still want to use that code. So I'm just going to leave it in there so you can see it later. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to call it um, div class. I'll give it a class of background image IMG thumb. So background image thumbnail. And one style part I will actually add is specific to what I'm using. So the background image URL. So the background image, so this will actually change the background image and then just close off the div. So now I just need to change that background image thumb. And um, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it below and then add in the background image. Instead of the URL that I used up here, I'll use that static URL all over again. Copy that, so from here to here. Make sure you're pasting correctly. And notice how this is green, it should all be yellow. And that has to do with how I put the style in. So if I use a single quote here, it changes everything. These double quotes uh, for CSS will you know, run into some conflicts, so that's where I did that. Okay, so now this would work in theory, but background image thumb is not an actual class. So we have to set it. In our base class, I'm not actually gonna make um, CSS or custom CSS just quite yet. Um, so I, I do wanna just add it in as my own CSS and I'll put it underneath block style and I'll add black background image thumb in here. So, and then back into my results, I'm going to copy all of this stuff, so everything, just copy the whole thing into back into base and then paste this stuff in. So now we see that our CSS is here. All right. So what we're doing with the style, the inline style is going to override this, right? So that's something that's nice, but we do want it to be the default either way. So I can actually get rid of this style here and use this as the default. So if I cut this out, I just do background image thumb and then back in my base, I can just set this URL to the default. So this is what it's gonna to default to now. Oops, I don't need the whole background image twice. Uh, so now it just defaults to this, which is cool. So this means that the background image, no matter what, it's gonna be the size of whatever it's inside of and then it's going to set um, the static URL to being, or the, the image to being this right here by using static, because we already have it loaded in here with load static files. So this is the default case. And then when we go in our results, we override it with, a, with an inline style, which is that. So that will change it. And notice one thing that's different about result versus home is that we set the style on, a, on the the parent container. So the TD is the parent container. The div tag is actually inside of that parent, which is good. That's what we want to see. But I'm going to actually copy this and go into home. And now what I'll do is I will have if item featured, I'm actually going to cut all of this stuff out. Right. So I'm just setting the width now, pasting this in here and we'll refresh at home. Uh Oh, it jumped everything back. Let's see product. Let's see if our search results actually changed anything. No. So let's actually look and see why. So if we inspect the element here, we see background image. I have some, I have an issue with the actual styling. So if we see these double quotes again, put them back into single quotes, All right? So this does happen sometimes when you're working in inline styles, as well as using mixing the template tags with, with CSS and stuff like that. So this does happen. So keep in mind for it. The quotes and the single quotes, it, it can be a little confusing sometimes, but just if you open it with double quotes, close it with double quotes, and then inside only use single quotes and vice versa. So if you open it with single quotes and close it with single quotes, inside only use double quotes. Okay, with with the exception of if it's inside of a block tag, so like um, what we did here. So notice this has double quotes on the inside as well as the outside, but that's because Django will render whatever inside of that on its own. So you don't have to worry so much, but 
you can still hold that convention true. So you could still say a single quote in there and it will still work. All right, so if I refresh in here, we see that it still works. Okay, so let's make sure that all of our, so going on a home, we see that this should work. Uh, the background image should work in here. Inside of results, it's not working. Notice there's green and stuff. So that's because of the styling. So I'm gonna change the inside quotes to being single quotes and make sure, because uh, Sublime Text sometimes adds a, another quote to the end. So make sure that's not the case. All right, so if I refresh, now those images actually changed. And if I go home, those images changed as well. If we notice the, it's pulling these to the left and that's because uh, we changed the margin um, only in the one the, at the one time. So we only changed the margin uh, which we deleted. So I'm actually going to add margin zero auto inside of that div class. And there, now they're all in the center. And now I can actually link these as well. So I can link these to the products too, so that they're actually coming through on the product itself. So if I search product, I also maybe want to link the image there as well. So I'll do a href equals two, and I'm just going to actually go ahead and copy this one on the bottom. And then close off that a tag. So if I refresh in the home page, these are now linked so I can click on them. I'm not going to actually add any action or styling like like if I hover over it, changing the color or something. I don't really need to do that because most people nowadays are savvy enough that they don't actually need to on Amazon. Amazon itself also does not do that. So if I go over a picture on Amazon, it does it just shows the the clicking button. Now the link is a little different, but the image itself does not change. Okay, so now going into product, all I need to do is link this one. So I still have that A tag link copied and I can use it in here. And I would want to use it on the bottom one as well. Okay, so what we see here is a potential problem with using the width of 100% and the height of 100% right here. Uh, so if this happens, all we have to do is add a style to it. In some cases it might just be height. So hard code the height into it. In some cases it might be width. So notice I added the height and now that fixed the style here. And we can also add that down to the one on the bottom. So style equals to height. And that will fix that issue that we just had um, of the linking. And that's because we put this div class where it was inheriting from TD. We, it still is kind of inheriting from TD, but adding this A tag in here uh, threw some things off there, so uh, it didn't work perfectly. So if that happens to you, um, hard coding in the height or the width or both uh, will overcome that issue. Where on the home page it didn't do that, and that's because we um, it, it just it's not in the table, it's not in a table row. There's all types of reasons for it, but even if that started to happen on yours, uh, all you'd have to do is hard code into the style, uh, the height that you're working with, or even possibly even the width that you're working with as well. Uh, that way you can make sure that, that these images will be like that. All right, so that is it for updating our product search and our homepage. Um, we'll probably come back to product search uh, in the future because we want to get rid of this stuff and maybe add some more text in here, kind of like what Amazon has. Like this, some of these things, some of these things we definitely won't have, but um, as far as like the price and maybe a little description or something that might be nice to actually have in here and maybe a little bit longer of a product description or a product title itself uh, you might even already have that already and then also maybe a vendor or something like that all right so that's it for updating our search function as well as the home page all right so we'll see you in the next one